So in our last example here, we're given a side, another side, and an angle. So let me draw out the information that we have here. So capital letters on the, the angles, ABC, lowercase letters on the sides, opposite the relevant angles. And let's fill in what we have. Side A has length 10. Side B has length 8. And angle B measures 20 degrees. So that's what we're given. So we're given two sides and an angle. The angle is not in between them. So this is side, side, angle not side angle side because the angle's not between them and that's a little worrisome because side side angle is the ambiguous case so it might have could have no solutions one solution or two solutions and we don't really know yet until we do some more work. We don't know whether there's going to be one triangle that fits this, these, uh, this data, or no triangles fit this data, or maybe two triangles that fit this data. So we're going to work with the law of sines to try and narrow this down. Sine A over A is sine B over B, which is sine C over C. Let me see. Uh, that's supposed to be a little c there. Let me see which of these we, we know. I'm going to fill in, we know little a, we know little b, and we're told the measure of angle b, so I can figure out the sign of angle b very quickly. So a reasonable thing is to try and figure out, first of all, what is the sign of angle a. So let me go ahead and try to calculate that. Sine of a over little a is sine of b, angle b over little b. So I'll fill in what I know there. I don't know the sign of little a yet, but I do know that uh, of angle a. But I do know that little a is 10, and I know that b is 20. Angle b is 20, and little b is length 8. And so sine of a, if I cross multiply there, I get 10 sine 20 over 8. So let's see what that comes out to be. 10 times sine of 20 divided by 8 turns out to be approximately 0 0.43. OK, so I'm looking for an angle whose sine is 0 0.43. Let me draw my unit circle again, or at least the top half of the unit circle. 0.43 is the y value. Remember, sine is y value. So there's 0 0.43. Uh-oh, there are two angles here. There's one, there's another one. They both have sine of 0.43. One's theta, but then if there's this other angle, which is actually 180 minus theta, they both have sine of 0.43. My calculator doesn't really know that. So if I work out from the calculator, if I just type in arc sine of 0.43, let me type that in. Uh, have to recalculate 10 sine of 20 divided by 8. And there's my calculator, if I just type in arc sine, it tells me that it's 25.3 degrees. But that's that angle theta there is 25.3 degrees. 
But we learned that there's another angle that also has sine of 0.43. And it's this other angle, 180 minus theta, that's 154.7 degrees. So angle A could be either one of those two possibilities, 25.3 degrees or 154.7 degrees. That means we have two different possibilities for angle A. Each one of them gives us a set of data that we can solve out the rest of the triangle with. And so we get two possible triangles as our, as our solutions. We'll have to solve for each one separately. So we've got two solutions here. We're going to solve for each one of them separately. So I'll do that on the next slide. So here we've, we've found that we have two solutions, depending on what angle A is. So I'll solve for each one separately. Let me draw my triangle. A, B, C. And in the first one, we figured out that A, angle A is 25.3 degrees. And then we also had some given data. A has length 10. B has length 8. We don't know what C is. Angle B was given to be 20 degrees. And we haven't figured out the rest of that. So let's go ahead and start figuring out the rest of it. Angle C would be 180 minus 20 minus 25.3. And so that's equal to 134. 0.7 degrees in this triangle, 134.7. And finally, we have to figure out what side C is. That's little c. And so we're going to use the law of sines on that. Sine of capital C over little c is equal to, I'll pick sine of capital B over little b, since those are the simplest values I can see. So sine of 134.7, that's angle c over little c, we're solving for that, is the sine of angle b is 20, and little b side has side length 8. And so if we cross multiply and solve for c there, C sine 20 is equal to 8 sine 134.7. And so C is equal to 8 sine 134.7 divided by sine 20. Definitely want to go to the calculator for that. So I'll type in 8 sine of 134.7. sine of 20. And it tells me that it's approximately 16.63. And so my C there is approximately 16.63. So I've solved out for all three angles and all three lengths of that triangle. But remember, we have another completely different triangle, which is based on finding a different value for angle A. So we've got to solve out for those as well. Let me draw that one. A, B, C. Little a, little b, and little c. And I'll fill in the, the values we're given. Angle B is 20. A has side length 10, side B has length 8. And we figured out the other possible value for angle A was, 
let's see, the other possible value for angle A was 154.7 degrees. So that's the other possible value. And then we want to solve out the rest of the triangle, which really means finding angle C and then side C. So angle C is pretty easy to find. It's 180 minus 20 minus 154.7, which is 180 minus 174.7. That's 5.3 degrees. Definitely not drawn to scale here, since this angle would be the way I've drawn it is much larger than 5.3, but that's okay. Now we want to find side C, and we'll use the law of cosines, just like we did on the other triangle. It's the same arithmetic, but with different numbers. So sine C over little c is equal to sine of capital B of angle B over little b. Now this time angle C is 5.3 degrees. Little c we still don't know. Uh, capital B is the angle 20 degrees, and little b is the length of 8. Cross multiply to solve for little c. And so little c is equal to, well, let's see, 8 times 5, 8 sine of 5.3 is equal to c sine 20. So c is 8 sine of 5.3 over sine of 20. And now I'll go to the calculator to figure that out. And that tells me that that's approximately 2.16. So now we've solved out all three angles and all three sides of that triangle. So we're done with that. To recap a little bit, let's see what we were given in this triangle. We were given a side another side, and then an angle. So this is really a side-side angle triangle. And that, unfortunately, is the ambiguous case, where it could have no solutions, one solution, or two solutions. And you don't really know until you start going to the law of sines to figure out what's happening. And when we applied the law of sines, we got a value for sine of capital A equal to, I think it was point, 0 0.4, 0 0.43. And the problem is that there are two angles that have a sine of 0.43. Your calculator will only give you one of them. If you take inverse sine of 0.43, it'll give you this one, 25.3 degrees. But we know if you look at the unit circle that sine of 180 minus theta is the same as sine of theta. So at the same time as looking at 25.3, we also have to look at this other possible value, 154.7 degrees for A. So we get two different possible angles for A. That leads us to two different triangles, and we have to solve out each one completely. So at that point, you really can't overlap the work anymore. You have to split up these two triangles into two different uh, problems. And then in each one, you draw it out, and you see which pieces of information you're missing. In this case, it was the third angle and the short side, or the, the third side. The third angle you find out just by subtracting the two angles you have, so that was pretty easy. And then you use the law of sines to solve for the length of the third side. Um, in the second triangle, we do the same thing. We find the third angle by subtracting from 180 degrees. And then we use the law of sines to find the length of the third side. So we've got two different triangles. They both satisfy the initial data. But using this rule for sines, this cofunction identity, sine of 180 minus theta equals sine of theta, we figure out the two possible angles. And then we can completely solve the two possible triangles separately. We get a whole set of sides and a whole set of angles on each one. So that was our practice on using the law of sines. In the next lecture, we'll come back and we'll look at the law of cosines, 
which is a different way to solve out a triangle completely, to find all the angles and all the sides. And you use the law of cosines when you have a different set of initial data for the triangle. So we'll learn about that in the next lecture. These are the trigonometry series on educator.com.